Hello everyone, it is Ivor Horse, welcome back to another episode of Boom Beach. Today you guys are back again for another episode of the Boom Beach base reviews. This is an episode in which you guys have a chance of getting your base featured. If you want to be having a chance of getting your base featured in the next episode, in which we're always going to be featuring three bases, head over to the comment section of this video, there's a template set up down there. All you need to do is copy paste the uh, template that I got set up and fill the information that I'm asking for and then you automatically are entered for the next episode of getting a chance of getting your base featured. Today as always we got three bases that we're going to be taking a look at and the first base is pretty interesting. It's a headquarters level 20. Uh, we're looking at the comment of uh, No Hernandez. I'm not sure if I pronounce it correctly. Let me let me try to re-pronounce that. No Hernandez. I think that is the way you pronounce it. He's in Panama Elite. And he's actually the co-leader level 50 with 624 victory points. That's actually quite significant. 600 and above is what I consider. Uh, actually, in the game itself, the, the system... Uh, tells you that you're gonna be getting attacked from 600 and above. So it's pretty interesting to see what kind of a defensive base we're gonna be encountering today. So no Hernandez over here has a shield generator. He's at this level 20. So he has everything already on this map with the exception of the shock mice because that's going to be coming in headquarters 21 But let's take a look at this base. You have a shock launch over here a shock launch over there and over here a shield generator level 3 We're going to be talking a little bit more about that later first off. Let's talk about the essentials You have her sculptor level 8. I think it is uh, currently in constructing it is uh, crafting. It seems like a masterpiece I really like the detail in boom beach as always um, your regular buildings you have your radar which is Pretty low level, I gotta say. That is okay. You still have a lot to discover in this game. So that's a great thing for sure. Your vault is maxed out. That is a good thing. Thumbs up to that. That means you already uh, are protecting as many resources as you can. Over here, we have a lab weapon lab. Already level 5 as well. And your armory that is also maxed out. Props to that. I really like what I'm seeing there. Offensively, Gumbo 20. Lannycraft 17. This one is 16. 17. 19. I would say before you upgrade it to 20, get the one that is uh, level 16 up to level 17. It's going to give you an additional warrior you can use. And that is going to be very helpful if you're using warriors, obviously. So definitely uh, focus on that. Um, and then, of course, upgrade the radar once you have the ability of, of moving on. Because, you know, you want to be making sure you got everything on the map. That gives you the most amount of spawn, more bases to attack, more victory points, more resources. You'll be able to progress faster into the game. Now let's talk defense here. Um, do you see any defensive statues? I don't think you do. You actually do, um, but I'm not sure where it is. I cannot. Oh, over here, a masterpiece, a 24% masterpiece. It's not too bad. I would honestly get a um, a building health because building health is immediately going to be affecting the shield generator and that quarters on itself. I really like how you place this, by the way. I really do like how you place this one. You have your shield generator over here, which makes it hard to defeat it. Uh, against the warrior attack strategy but what i really like is the fact that you have a shock launcher right next to it and a flamethrower over here and a flamethrower over here now what i would personally do is i will place this higher level flamethrower on the location where this flamethrower is because that way if warriors are going to be attacking your base they're more likely to attack over here and a level 9 is going to be doing more damage than level 8. So it's pretty obvious. Switch this flamethrower with this one over there. And you're going to be doing pretty fine. Same thing with this machine gun. You want to be having a lot of damage focusing on here. But I really like this idea. I haven't seen this concept quite yet. I really like it. And overall, the back defense seems very nicely organized. You have a couple of mines here and there. Nothing too, uh, too much over here. You have one mine over there. Um, you have uh, a couple of mines behind the statue over there as well. Uh, a couple of them after that. So your your center seems to be nicely defended. And that's something that I like to see. Now, let's see if we can find any mines behind here. We have one mine here. We also have one mine there. We have one, one mine behind here. I would say the right side seems a little weak against the warrior attack strategy. So maybe you want to be having some mines uh, uh, more at the right side. I already see a couple of mines over here as well. Uh, which I feel the left side is even better defended. So the left side is good. I would work on your right side So maybe the mine that is right around here places on the right side to kind of even things out And you may even want to be placing some of these mines around the headquarters a little bit more to the outside as well Then the rest 
What I really like about this defense in particular is that you got really two things on going here. You got your front offense over here, in which I would say you can still place a couple of boom mines uh, at the shore. So that way it's going to be hurting the units that are going to be walking over it. So I would definitely take that into consideration. But sniper tower can, uh, cannon, this cannon can be a little bit more into the front. Everything is nicely covered by this rocket launcher over here. And you even have a shock blaster right behind it. That is something really great. I might even want to swap the rocket launcher with the shock blaster. That way the shock blaster is like available into play a little bit earlier. But uh, you can decide that on your own. Then after that you have a shock launcher. Which is kind of in the center of the game. Which is still alright. You have your rocket launcher over here. The only thing that I don't really like that much. Is that the shock launcher is not hitting the headquarters maybe you want to be swapping this shock launcher with the cannon over here so that way it actually does hit the headquarters but that is up to you to decide but in general i kind of feel that this base layout works pretty nicely it is just that over here at the sides there isn't really much protection going on so you might be giving away those buildings for free but it really backs it up once again once you reach the ending spot over here with the shield generator and the shock launcher over there I would say maybe you want to be changing the way the shock launcher is right now. Placing the shock launcher on the location where the machine gun is instead of the other way around. So I would just kind of experiment with how the way things are going for you right now. This base seems very solid to me. But there's still I kind of feel there's a, a lot of open spots here. Which I think if you crop them a little bit better together that the defenses can do their work. And you might even start this defense... A little bit like later in the base. So you can crop things a little bit more together. So that way the defenses are overlapping each other. And that way you're going to be having a more effective frontal offense. And then at the back uh, everything's going to be weakened. And you'll be able to defend yourself against any possible attacks on your base. That is my base review for you. Let's move on to the second base. So the next base is in the task course called Kentucky Elite and I'm actually really happy that you submitted this base to me because this is a headquarters level 21 that we are going to be reviewing in this episode of the Boom Beach Base Review. So as you guys can see over here a headquarters level 21 with a shield generator that is right around here is a level 3 is a level 61 guy his name is Vic7. Uh, exclamation mark and the funny thing is he's actually higher level than me and he wants him to give him a base review he has a little bit less medals than i have but that doesn't mean he's going to be encountering the same type of enemies on my base uh on his base so it's going to be interesting to see what this base actually looks like let's go ahead and break it down starting off with the basics let's investigate how high the levels are i kind of expect everything to be maxed out your armory is level 21 your sculptor is maxed your radar is obviously maxed your your vault should be maxed out as well over here, I expect everything to be 20, which it seems that they all are, which is really great. Using the tank medic uh, attack strategy, uh, if you're using it a lot, you might be, want to be considering upgrading three of your landing crafts up to headquarters level 21. I mean level 20, no, not headquarters 21. Uh, to get that cool gunboat, but also uh, getting, that extra, um, getting that extra medic on top of there as well. Definitely upgrade your gunboat is going to be worth it. Two extra gunboat energy can make the difference between life or death. Let's take a look at your statues. 27, 27, 14, 41. That is almost the best. Really nice one. 47. That's a great one too. 17, 16, and 16. And I think you got some defensive statues over here. Uh, oh my god, a 37. That is crazy. And a 56. That is 28%. I really like your statues, Vic. Very well done here. You have your shield generator over here. Level 3. And a shock blaster over there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this base. How would I personally attack this base? First choice would be warrior attack strategy. So I'm going to be looking for your shock mines. There's one shock mine over here. Uh, which is already level 2. That's pretty interesting. Is there one shock? There's one shock mine over here. I really like the location behind the iron mine because it's very likely that warrior attack strategy gonna be walking here and this is not really a location that a lot of people would be looking behind so definitely like that position for sure um where else where else one over here next to the sniper tower i'm not so sure how i find how i think about this sniper tower placement i would honestly place it behind like a like a boom cannon or have like a weapon lab inside of your base and place a mine behind that. Those are some tricky places that people usually don't think about like in the first second. And also behind the armory is also a really great position right now. So maybe you want to be rearranging your base to make that a little bit more tricky. But it is all up to you. 
As far as the layout goes, I would definitely do something with the mines over here. They kind of feel out of place, not really all that relevant. Uh, people usually just attack the left side or the right side, so in the center, they're not gonna be doing a whole lot. Maybe you wanna be placing a boom mine like right in front of this golden storage or something like that. Uh, but on its own, I kind of feel that they're not really going to be doing all that much. So maybe you want to be changing the way you have that. Because inside of the base, I see a very nice mine spreading. Definitely like what I'm seeing there. So that might be causing some issues. I see, so I see, actually see some sort of a weak spot. You actually asked me for some suggestions against the warrior attack strategy and tank semantics. I kind of feel against warrior attack strategy, you're pretty much good to go. Because the mine spreading is good. Um, maybe upgrade your mines to like level 21 that might be a thing to do for sure because mines really hurt um, This mine over here. I don't know for sure how I feel about this I would honestly place it like behind this boom cannon That's already a great location as well And it's a little bit more relevant if it's a little bit more in the back of the base at the headquarters itself It's only gonna be facing the warrior attack strategy and you really want to make sure that your mines are multifunctional So you want to be having those inside of your base rather than at the headquarters itself the position of the shield generator it feels like it's nicely protected. You have a rocket launcher or two that's covering it very nicely. You have this cannon that's doing some work. You have the sniper tower over here. You have the cannon covering the edge. So that is all great. And of course the shock blaster. So you definitely decided for a great location over here with the shield generator. And also defending a couple of these buildings over here is also a very nice choice. I kind of expect a lot of people to go from the left side because of that. And when I take a look at the left side, I see a shock launcher there. I honestly would say place this shock launcher like on the location where this boom cannon is maybe like swap do something with your shock launches and I don't kind of feel that they work well together maybe a shock launcher here at this cannon and then uh, over here at the boom cannon but the issue that you're gonna be having is if I drop one shock here it's gonna be getting all of these buildings same thing with these three so I would kind of like spread things out a little bit more. Same thing over here. You're going to be getting the cannon, the shock blaster and the rocket launcher. In general, just with one shock in your base, it's really easy to get already three very key buildings. And, and that's that might be a bad thing. So I, I would do something with that. Um, the rocket launchers seem to be functioning really well. But if you place the shock very nicely right in between, you are able to get both shock launchers this boom cannon and this shock launcher as well so your main focus should be to spread everything out even more but still make it a little bit more effective towards the left side i kind of feel that the left side is somewhat of a weak spot here despite this being very nicely protected people are just going to be focusing on the shield generator with this new upgrade so people focusing on the shield generator make sure you protect that it's basically your second headquarters that you want to be protecting there other than that, warrior attack strategy, wouldn't be too worried about that, but against tanks and medics, definitely increase the protection around here. But in overall, just spread things out a little bit more um, with the key buildings over here. Maybe pushing all of these buildings a little bit more to the right side over here, creating some sort of a group down there. I'm not sure how you're going to go around doing that, but I'm pretty sure that you're going to be able to figure that one out. I hope this base review helps you out, and let's move on to the final base of today. The next base is in a task force called the Soya Company. Go ahead and join in if you guys want to join in. We're looking for Bluebird Palais, or Palais, I'm not sure how to pronounce it for sure. He's level 40, he is uh, the leader of this wonderful task force. He has 340 victory points. Let's take a look at this base, I'm curious to know what we're going to be finding here. I'm pretty sure that you guys expected to see another like maxed out base, but no, this time around we're talking about the headquarters level 15. Pretty interesting stuff. My first tip to you is, if you upgrade your headquarters to level 16, you're going to be getting yourself the 7th landing craft. So, I would really focus on that for sure. But, uh, yeah, you seem to be a relatively... Yeah, you're you're kind of up there. So, you're not really too low level for your, ta for your headquarters, but you're not already too high level either. Uh, that being said, let's focus on the essentials as always. Uh, Armory, Vault, you want to be upgrading that for sure. Especially when you go up to headquarters level 16. Um, you have the sculptor over here and the radar, which is all reasonably leveled up. Let's take a look at your statues. An 11%, 38, 34, 12, 13. You have a lot of gunboat and 28. Do I miss out on anything? I don't think I am. So these are your statues. Um, you don't have a gunboat masterpiece. 
definitely get that if you got the chance on, on getting that uh, for sure. Let's take a look at offense. 15, 13. Upgrade those to 14 if you can. But still the priority would be headquarters level 16. Get the landing craft, get it up to par and then level up the rest at the same time. By the looks of your defenses, they are very nicely leveled up. I really like the way you got them leveled up. And that brings me back to my point. You can actually go to headquarters level 17, get that shock launcher, do a bunch of damage against defense. You have the victory points to advance. So definitely, I would focus on that for sure. So, in overall, the base defense. I see a lot of holes in your defense. I'm gonna tell you why that is and, and why exactly with what attack strategy. Starting off with the warriors. You know, I always start off with warriors. Uh, what I found in particular with this base is that is that this base is really easy to take down with warriors. You see, this rocket launcher is over here. And if you take a look at this sniper tower or this stone storage, it is not going to be reaching those. So by the time the rocket launcher starts firing away, you're already up to these two defenses. In which you only have to drop one smoke to make your way up here. Because maybe your cannon is going to be hitting. And maybe the snap tower is going to be hitting. And you're going to be losing one or two warriors. But you know what. It doesn't matter. You only need one smoke to make your way up there. Saves a lot of gun gunboat energy. And you're able to take down the base. From here. You need uh, one smoke on, th on the sniper tower. Second smoke right in between. Third one on the cannon. The fourth one right in between these two. And the fifth one on the headquarters. You only need five smokes to make your way up to the headquarters. I feel that's a bad thing. That leaves a lot of gunboat energy to shock. The first shock is going to be the flamethrowers and the machine gun. And the second shock is going to be um, over here or somewhere else. Whatever you want. And probably some gunboat energy for like mad kits. And overall this base is really, really easy to take down with the warrior attack strategy. And it's basically the same thing on the other side. As a matter of fact you can actually do this in less shocks at the left side here. So make your way up here. Uh, once again, one smoke, two smoke, three smoke, four smoke. Walk in the diagonal line, four smokes to make you way up to the headquarters. That is a disaster for a base like this. So I would definitely change that around. Heavy Zuka, I would say people would just avoid this boom cannon over here. And they would just walk all the way to the back. Then drop a shock on this cannon over there. Take out the cannon, get a bunch of free gunboat energy from these buildings. Then make it way up here. Uh, chances are they're already going to be destroying this boom cannon in advance. And then it's just the rocket launcher that they're going to be taking out. This base is incredibly easy to take out. So what I would suggest is that you just redesign your entire base. It is cool what you've done here. The mine spreading is good. The frontal defense is definitely there. But it's not functioning well if you're leaving so many holes open at the left and the right side. So what I would suggest is to make like a base in the corner or the base in the back. Make sure that you have a couple of the, these defenses over here at the sides. Make sure that your cannons are a little bit more into the front. But make sure that they're very much in the center. And you want to... Like, look at this range. This range is not going to be doing anything with these rocket launcher. You want to have that in the front of your base. In the center. So that way it protects everything. And um, flamethrowers at the headquarters. Machine guns at the headquarters. It's okay to have a, uh, one machine gun at the front. But you definitely got the defense to defend against the base... Against attacks on your base. But right now this base. Uh, I, I would be surprised if this base wouldn't be wiped out. Around this victory point area. And that is just my two cents over here. I hope this helps you out. But uh, I would just look online for like a couple of bases. That you can build uh, around your headquarters level. I'm very certain if you look up for a guide or something like that. I, I need to start over from scratch. And make some base build guides for specific headquarters levels. So that way you guys can go ahead and actually use them at the same time. And I'll be able to show you show to you how successful the defenses are on those types of bases. So yeah, um, I hope this review helps you out. Once again, focus on getting to headquarters level 16, 17 and redesign your base entirely. Focusing on the boom cannons in the center, um, the rocket launcher in the center and just cover the headquarters a little bit better. My spreading is good. And with those things in mind, I hope this base review helps you out. That being said, we're going to be wrapping this video off here. I was a little bit extensive in this Boom Beach base review. But I kind of wanted to make sure that these people got their bases reviewed in a very nice way. As always, you guys have always a chance of getting your bases featured. I am sorry if I didn't get around to reviewing your base. But there's always a chance. Always at random. Always different types of bases. That being said, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Using the template I got set up there. 
I need to calm more. I need to talk more calm but yeah that's gonna be doing it for this episode of boom beach i hope that you guys enjoyed as always make sure that if you guys like this video too boom give it a thumbs up tomorrow hammerman strikes back be there early i will be there early as well it's gonna be pretty awesome i'm looking forward to this i really am that being said this has been reverse for boom beach i'm gonna be signing off and i'll see you guys in the next one